is it's your host night wrencher now today it's a pretty basic video um, I'm just gonna go through everything that you need to get your uh, carbureted LS engine running um, overall it's not too complicated but it is fairly expensive so let's just go ahead and jump right into this so first of all uh, you are going to need a carburetor obviously uh, you're going to need the carbureted manifold when you do buy your manifold you do need to verify if you're going to want to get a dual plane or single plane and then they make them for cathedral port heads and then square port heads the main difference between that is that the cathedral port heads although they're still ret rectangular on the intake they are longer and narrower and then the square ports are more like actually like square not as tall and a little bit wider uh, the next thing you're going to need um, aside from just the regular stuff you are going to need your coils you're going to need your wires you're going to need the stock harness this is the stock harness and then this is the MSD harness we'll go into that a little bit later uh, to run it you don't actually need to run the temperature sensor but you do need a crank sensor and you do need your cam sensor hooked up uh, I broke the oil pressure sensor but it doesn't matter you don't need it um, you can run your PCV or you cannot it's up to you um, I am running an electronic fuel pump um, with an LS, you're gonna have to run an electronic fuel pump. I'm using a TBI pump on the Edelbrock carburetor. The TBI pump uh, pumps sufficient fuel to keep it running for a good while. If you're gonna use a Holley carburetor, like a 4150 or 4160, um, a TBI pump will just blast through the seat and you're not gonna be able to get it running without flooding. Uh, if you do use a Holley, you are gonna need to buy a regulator. Um, I have this on a 516 because the truck originally was a 516 and then I have it converted to using this fancy filter 516 on the other end. Uh, it comes with different adapters and then you can do uh, 3 8 on the other side. 3 8 will get you to the carburetor. Yeah, as far as I know, most aftermarket carburetors are 3 8 whether it's Holly or Edelbrock. Um, you are going to need your starter if you're doing an adapter bell housing like me. Uh, you're going to need a special starter, but for this application, like let's say it's stock, you're putting it behind like a 350, um, three, a turbo 350, a turbo 400 or 700 or 4, um, this might work or it might not work. Um, for testing purposes, I do have the stock starter on and I do have power to, that goes directly to the battery and then I do have the, the wire that goes to the switch. After that, you've got your, your little wire loom. This will come from your MSD box. All it does is connect coils, crank sensor, cam sensor, and that's it. Pretty basic. Then I've got my, my MSD. It's a 6014 LS series. They make a 6012 and a 6010. This seems to be like the newest. Actually, it says right here. 6014 this seems to be the most uh, modern and up-to-date version which is why I got it price differences are all basically the same I would definitely run this one if you ever plan to change anything from the reluctor wheel or anything like that it comes with a lot of preset settings I already went through that on my unboxing that's nothing different it comes with two harnesses uh, two separate harnesses for the thin one a short one and a long one I'm running the long one right now and then your main harness then I've got that powered up to a switch just to be able to turn it off and on. And then I've got a ground from the plate that I have it bolted to. And then I have a ground from the computer. And that computer is going to go to the ground on the head. It can be anywhere, but I, I like to pick the head. And then that same ground, the black cable go, will go to the battery. So I've got the negative battery that goes to the head. I've got the red on this side that goes to the starter. Uh, this brown and white one doesn't matter. This is for my fuel. Um, not important. The red one goes to my switch and then from there to the MST box. Do you do want to run a fuse uh, when you're doing this? You don't want to burn up the box because they don't have any kind of warranty. And the green 
um, is just an extra ground that goes to chassis ground, to chassis ground, engine ground, power to the starter, and then I've just got, I've just got the last, the one wire, the last wire, uh, and then this will get everything started. So you just hook this up to the to the red. Actually, actually, I'm gonna leave it off. I don't want it running right now. Um, so you just go ahead and touch it, and it it will it will crank. If I turn on the uh, power to my MSD box, it should run instantly. So that about takes care of everything. So in conclusion, you need your box, you need the stock stuff, um, you need your cam and crank sensor, a battery, a starter. It's really not much at all. Um, but that's, that's pretty much it. After that, it's just all um, convenient stuff. It's wiring up your alternator, wiring up anything else you're going to be, be using. Um, but overall, this is this is pretty much it. Oh, everything else is no different from any other in engine swap that you might do. So that pretty much does it. This was just a very quick video showing everything that it is. Pretty basic. I'll have a startup video uh, later on. Um, I'm just kind of playing around with it. Got really excited after I got all my parts from Summit. Um, shout out to Summit because they're always on top of it so i'm gonna have all the part numbers that i use to get this thing running in the description below and i hope to see you guys all in the next one night wrencher out